You have Patrick Fandaro here, co-founding and managing partner at Visa Franchise. Khalil, thanks so much for joining us today. Hey, Patrick. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. So Khalil, you're doing big things in terms of the technology space, uh, making it a lot easier for immigration attorneys to prepare all different types of visa applications. Uh, could you introduce yourself and talk a little bit about your journey with your company, Caseplank? Sure. Um, so I'm Khalil. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Caseplank. At Caseplank, we build end-to-end -end workflow software for immigration lawyers. And our goal is to automate the most complex writing intensive legal workflows and in immigration that includes the EB2 national interest waivers, the O1As, the EB1. Um, and so that's where we're starting. What was the genesis of, of, of Case Plank? How, how did you think about it? Uh, great question. So uh, I, I'm a technical co-founder, I should say. Before Case Plank, I was working at Google, building AI for physicians. Specifically, I was working on a software based on clinical notes data. So it's very like text intensive. Um, and around the same time, I worked with my immigration lawyer on my green card case. And I found that there was a lot of overlap or basically what I was doing at Google had me think about automation possibilities for automation and immigration law. And that's how um, Case Plank was born. I went through the process myself. Um, I saw how time consuming it was for my lawyer and I wanted to build technology to make it more efficient and uh, cost effective. And I was joined by other people to work on this uh, project. So I have two co-founders, a founding head of a product who's in immigration, uh, a team of um, engineers and data scientists, and it all became, uh, you know, uh, a reality <laughs> really quickly. Yeah, it seems like what it was just a few months ago that we met and the product yep. has really advanced and it's you guys are definitely not growing at a linear pace and it's exciting to see that. Right. So I think the first time that we talked, um, I had a proof of concept at that point. Um, and um, yeah, it was a couple of months ago. I think it was in August when we talked and we've come a long way for sure. <laughs> so you mentioned a little bit, you know, what Case Blank's about. What does it exactly do to, for immigration attorneys and how does the immigration attorney as well as the, the beneficiary mm -hmm. uh, benefit? So we automate the writing intensive workflows and let's say, um, let's pretend for a second that we're talking for about um, the EB2 national interest waiver. Let's pretend that you're my lawyer and I'm, I'm your client and we're working on that case um, together. So let's say I'll provide you with my resume, all of the documentary evidence that you ask for to build a case. What Caseplink does is that it turns that client data into finalized legal packets. Um, and it works in multiple steps. So the first one is the data ingestion, where um, our software ingests all the data, reads all of those documents. The second step is the what I call document understanding, um, which is a way to describe that our software understands specific elements in the documents that you, the client um, or the lawyer uploads onto the platform, um, specific data points that should be extracted from the documents, uh, for instance, if we're talking about a Google Scholar uh, document, this, uh, our technology knows that the number of citations is important. It knows that um, it's important to know which journals the person published. Um, and, um, and so that's, that's what I like to call document understanding. And then there's additional case research that has to be done, right? So for instance, uh, there's some research that needs to be done about the area of expertise of the petitioner. We also use um, automation for that as well or any statistics, uh, for instance, let's say that you want to prove that a, um, a petitioner commanded a high salary, um, any statistics um, that would support that, you know, median salaries and specific regions, things like that. So we, we do the automation of the, the case research um, related to the uh, petitioner as well. And the final step I would say is the drafting, right? So all of uh, turning all that data into uh, a finalized case. So that would include uh, the, the, the legal brief, the expert letters, which we also uh, automate and help with um, uh, first drafts, the statement of purpose and the exhibit list, which I've heard is very painful to put together. So I would imagine what maybe could take two to four months with a applicant working together with an immigration attorney. If it's going smoothly, I, I could imagine that being cut down to, you know, 30 days or so. Right, so that's the ultimate goal, right? The goal is to cut it to, even cut it down to a couple of days. Um, and the more we work on this technology, the more we can improve it. And I wanna get to a point where, you know, it all happens at a click of a button. So eventually we are able to generate 
uh, good quality first drafts that could turn into, um, you know, fi final drafts pretty quickly. That's the goal. You, you talked about, you know, software that automates different tasks that are pretty complex. Can you explain in simple terms, what is AI? What are large language models, machine learning? As it's a little bit over my head, and I imagine if the audience is anything like me, it's, it's a lot of buzzwords that I'm still trying to figure out exactly what they are. Okay, so I really love to talk about that stuff and hopefully um, I can describe it in layman terms. So artificial intelligence, um, I think of it as a technology that enables computers to write uh, talk, see, kind of like replicate human intelligence, um, and also do the other things that humans do. I feel like sometimes there is kind of like a, a mix of terms, like we hear AI, we hear machine learning, we hear data science, and sometimes they're used interchangeably. I think of it as a diagram where AI is kind of like the, um, the big bubble where um, we essentially describe building machines that can mimic human um, intelligence. And then within that, you have machine learning, which is a field where we teach machines to perform a specific task. And in the intersection of that, you have data science. Why? Because we teach machines using data. So if you think about um, large language models, they are machine learning models that are sophisticated. And the way that they're trained is with um, like, basically data science is a tool that gets you there. So we, we use a lot of, you know, uh, text data to, let's say, train a large language model. In the context of large, large language models, they are very sophisticated machine learning models called neural networks. Um, and they teach computers to generate human uh, language text. And they're called large because they have billions of parameters. Um, and also that requires a lot of data to train. With the technology of CaseBlink, how is it different than what attorneys are already doing? How is the technology different? Yeah, that's a very good question. So the technology that we're building is based on meticulously engineered models. So uh, I think I mentioned before document understanding. So we want to build technology that understands, um, you know, the documents that are shared by the, the client in this case. And we want to build technology that understand in the context of national interest waiver, understand um, the profile of the candidate and build a case based on that. And our software also knows uh, parts of the immigration agency policy manual and has background knowledge about that specific visa. Um, and finally, it's hard to generate those long documents. And like you said there, it's, it's a complex task. Um, so that's the, pro the problem that we're trying to solve, right? So we're trying to get these models to write very long documents in a way that also avoids making things up. And I don't know if you've heard of this term before, hallucinations, which is when the AI essentially makes up something because it doesn't have um, background knowledge about something. Uh, and that's something that we're very aware of. And that's how we're try like trying to meticulously build the models in a way that generates texts that uh, text that it makes sense and is of good quality. And that's what it seems like AI and, and tech that it's an aid to the attorney as, as similar to a, a paralegal is an aid to the lawyer, but essentially it's the attorney that's going to be checking the work and making sure that the paralegal or whatever the, the output is, whether it's more of a, a software like case blank actually portrays what the attorney is looking to put forward to the U S government. No. I think so. And I think it's um, really not meant as a replacement tool. It's meant as a tool that increases efficiency, right? So you, the more, uh, the quicker you go through that, you know, document organization, document processing step, understanding what's in the documents and how you can use that in the context of building a case, that's going to make your work easier and uh, also more e efficient. And potentially, if you have a lot of cases, move through those cases quicker. And I think something that we can have with AI as well is that, um, well, I mean, we're humans, we make mistakes. Uh, AI right now also makes mistakes, but I, I think of a world where uh, things keep evolving in terms of how we build this technology and, and it makes less and less mistakes and up to the point where, you know, it, you don't have any uh, mistakes in, in the briefs, which, uh, you know, would not lead to denials because of very silly mistakes in the cases. Um, and so I also think of AI as a way of basically checking these cases. So reading the entire case and making sure there aren't any silly mistakes in them. So I can see from an attorney's perspective, they're going to save time on just like operational tasks and, and some of the tasks their subordinates are, are carrying out as well as just client servicing, where if you can service a client in two weeks, 
mm-hmm. as opposed to four months, three months, that's a lot of time you're not responding to emails. You're not having to jump on a phone call and the petitions in and, and, and on to the next case where I hear a lot of complaints of, Hey, there from both sides, clients and attorneys where, Oh, it's difficult to follow up or, you know, we're, we're back and forth where if it's all compressed, just the two weeks, you're, you're kind of skipping through a lot of that back and forth communication on the case. Yeah. And I worked with a lawyer on, on my EB2 and IW case. And before talking to her, I talked to a bunch of lawyers that could not take my case because they had, um, you know, they had a backlog and they wouldn't be able to work on my case because it would take them four months. Um, <laughs> and so, right. So that's why I think it basically helps everybody. It helps uh, people that want to apply to these uh, green green cards or visas and want to work with specific lawyers. It helps the lawyers as well, um, you know, uh, if they have a backlog, process more cases. And time is of the essence with the visa bulletin, potential change in the administration for the presidency. We don't know, you know, who's going to be the president, how USCIS adjudication trends are going to change. So right now, these visas are being approved at a very high rate with STEM, EB2, NAWs in the 90 percentile approval rate. So for, you know, attorneys listening, uh, beneficiary, uh, potential applicants, petitioners listening, you know, now is the time to, to move forward and Khalil, what are some of the other ways, some of the other opportunities you see in the legal industry broader for, for AI to, to help out? Um, that's a good question. I Generally, I think AI is going to make everyone's life um, a little bit easier. Not going into legal, like I'm trained as a scientist myself and I'm using AI for a bunch of things. Um, so I think it's impacting a lot of industries. I think in the legal industry, it's estimated that 44% of um Illegal tasks in the U.S. can be automated with Gen AI. I do think, though, that it's complex automation and that with complex automation, we need guardrails and we need meticulous engineering. I think more and more lawyers are realizing the, uh, like the, the power of these models and uh, the importance of their tools, of, of these tools. Um, and they, they definitely want to use them because they see that they, they, they can increase their you know, efficiency. So we've been talking to so many lawyers and people are generally, g- genuinely curious um, and open to using the technology, which is a good sign. So Case Blank has a focus on immigration law. How do you think the integration of AI technology impacts the immigration legal landscape? I think AI is going to help with bettering access to justice, right? Because eventually I think what will happen is that more people will have access to these um, green cards and visas uh, that they would otherwise maybe not have been able to apply to or pay for. Um, So that's, I think, a big, big one. It is inherently going to enable for more cases to be processed because these are complex cases and it takes time to prepare them. Um, And I think with AI, we can cut down um, that amount of time to much, much shorter. I think that the integration of AI technology is definitely going to change the landscape as well from uh, like we see a lot of these startups uh, directly addressing the consumer, for instance, um, and that that is happening thanks to AI, right? Because uh, it's easier to serve the, the consumer directly with these tools now. Although I think it's still challenging because um, lawyers are needed um, not just to oversee the process, but also there's a human aspect to this, which I personally believe, I, it's my belief, right? Like people can think differently, but I think that the human aspect um, is really important for these green cards and visas as a, client. I like to cultivate my relationship with my lawyer. Uh, I like to know that someone is overseeing this process that I can talk to if I need to. Um, And I think everyone's situation is a little different. So although AI will improve things, cases can be very, very complex. And I don't think we are there yet to have like completely autonomous systems. Um, And I I truly don't believe that lawyers are replaceable in this case. Um, And, you know, I have a great relationship with mine and I don't think computers uh, can replace that human aspect of things. And Khalil, with the increasing importance of technology and legal practice, what advice do you have for legal professionals to embrace AI solutions? I think I would I would say just keeping an open mind and testing the products, even though they're not, you know, 100 percent there. Uh, you know, don't dismiss them because you heard of a small mistake or you're not happy with, with a small thing. I'm, and I'm only saying this because 
this technology is evolving at such an incredible speed that the mistakes you see today, you're not going to see them tomorrow. Um, mm. And I think rather than like approaching this with a systematic, you know, critical mindset, like I would think about what this technology would look like in a year or two based on what you're seeing today is kind of my perspective. But I might be a little biased because I'm in this industry and I, I'm, I just get excited about AI. <laughs> yeah, I would see it you know, as, okay, maybe you're doing a hundred cases a year with these tools, you can five exit and you can do 500 cases and you can grow a larger team and hire more employees and maybe lower your pricing because there's economies of scale and have a, a bigger impact than if totally. you were just going to do your hundred cases a, a year, which is nothing wrong with that. But if you can have an outsized impact at, at 500, you know, why not do it? Yeah. Khalil, is there anything that we didn't touch on today that you think is important for people in the immigration community, professionals to, to keep in mind? Um, well, I would just say uh, maybe don't be scared of AI, but um, think about it rather as a, as a tool that can make you much more productive and like you said, like supercharge your practice. So yeah, just kind of like ending on that note, I think sense. And Khalil, what's the best way for attorneys to kind of taste out how they might uh, benefit from the solutions and products that you offer? Yeah. So um, anyone who's interested can reach out to us directly. So we have a sign up form on um, our caseblink.com website. So happy uh, to have anyone sign up there and we'll directly follow up with them. Great, Khalil. Well, I really appreciate your time today and, and uh, best of luck as you continue to grow and look forward to hearing from more and more immigration attorneys that benefit from your service, as well Thanks, as the, the end beneficiaries. Awesome. Thanks so much for having me. Thanks, Khalil.